Hi, uh, this is Dr. Dahir from the Mayo Clinic. I am the chair of the ultrasound division. We are going to have a short demonstration of the shoulder joint and how we do the ultrasound examination. I usually like to stand behind the patient because it allows me to uh, use gravity to my advantage and I don't get work-related musculoskeletal injuries, which is a big thing these days for people who do ultrasound examinations. Patient likes it because patient can look at the monitor as I'm scanning. In the shoulder, our intention is to look at the biceps tendon, the supraspinatus tendon, the infraspinatus tendon, the teres minor tendon as part of the rotator cuff evaluation. We have few dynamic evaluation movements, which we will demonstrate. The most important being the one of impingement, where the model will help us abduct the arm and we will look for sliding of the rotator cuff under the chromium. Usually, we begin with evaluation of the biceps tendon. We're going to start in a neutral position. So, her arm's going to come up here and be right in the middle, supinated, so that the biceps tendon is pulled out. Sometimes, minor external rotation will help in bringing the biceps tendon in view. I always start in a transverse view. So once I start transverse, you can see clearly right between the greater and the lesser tuberosity is the biceps tendon. It's very hyperechoic. When I turn, the transducer it becomes dark. When I turn it again, it becomes white. That is a property of an isotropy in a biceps tendon. And I think it's really important as you're scanning to make these heel to maneuvers to make sure the biceps tendon is really well visualized. This is the biceps tendon in the bicipital groove between the lesser tuberosity and the greater tuberosity. So we are going to go up and see what happens as it's trying to become intraarticular. You can see it becomes a little bit more linear, but there is no subluxation or dislocation over the lesser tuberosity on the medial side. So we go down, this is the biceps tendon in the groove. As we go further out, you can see the pectoralis muscle tendon come up. The biceps tendon goes under it. And then as you go further out, it becomes an entire muscle. We go back up in transverse plane. Everything in MSK should be seen in two planes. So we will do a longitudinal assessment here. So now you can see the tendon is really, really well seen. There is no anisotropy. It is almost 90 degrees to the ultrasound beam. It has a very nice fibrillar echo texture. And as I go inferiorly, you can see the tendon becomes the muscle. That's the biceps muscle. When I come up again, if I go medially, I start seeing the subscapularis tendon. So for seeing it better, we will externally rotate the arm a little bit more. And now you can see the subscapularis tendon has got pulled out. It's a fairly broad tendon, so you have to go superiorly and inferiorly as you look at the entire tendon. Go 90 degrees and evaluate the tendon in the orthogonal plane. Medial and lateral movements are really important. We go back in the transverse plane and we have the subscapularis in view. If I go further medially, there is that big bone which is shadowing. That is the coracoid process of the scapula. Sometimes there is a ligament, that small hypoechoic ligament you can see that arises from the coracoid. That's the coracohumeral ligament. And some patients may have impingement under this when you try to do external internal rotation. So we'll try that. We've got the coracoid in view. We've got the subscapulars in view. So please internally rotate your arm and externally rotate again. And you can see it's a pretty beautiful slide of the subscapularis uh, and there is no evidence of any tears. So the next position is the modified crass position to look at the supraspinatus tendon. So please bring your arm behind, place on your hip and elbow towards your spine. Once she does that, the supraspinatus tendon gets pulled out from under the acromion and allows us to see it. Unlike the MRI, in which you can always see the tendons for ultrasound, you have to manipulate them to come into view. Because I know I can palpate her scapular spine, I know the supraspinatus is above that. And since I know the trajectory is going to be under the chromium, and it's going to insert way up there in the greater tuberosity, my transducer is going to be at that expected oblique location. And the moment I put it there, you can see the orientation is very, very clear. We can see a beautiful 
supraspinatus tendon. It does appear to be somewhat thickened, might have some chronic tendinosis, but it's seen really well inserting onto the greater tuberosity. At this location, you can go further out and look for the biceps tendon origin right there, and then slide back and look at the supraspinatus. If you turn 90 degrees orthogonal to that view, you can see the rotator cuff really well. Interiorly is the biceps tendon in the bicipital groove. Posterior to it is the rotator cuff, which includes the supraspinatus anteriorly and the infraspinatus posteriorly. So it definitely looks somewhat thickened uh, compared to normal. Okay, so gonna relax the arm again in neutral position. What, to look at the posterior aspect of the infraspinatus tendon, we can scan from behind. And again, the medial side of the screen is on the left, the lateral is on the right. I am below the scapular spine, so I can look at the muscles really well there, hypoechoic muscles. And there is a, as I go laterally, you can see the, the tendon emerging from the center, and that's the infraspinatus as it comes and inserts onto the uh, greater tuberosity. So you can really see it very, very well as, as you go in the, from the back, from the medial to lateral. Now, if you have any doubt whether you're looking at an intact tendon or not, you can always do a dynamic evaluation. So bring the arm up a little bit and keep it like that. We will externally rotate now, externally rotate. There we go, and internally rotate. And look at that, very nice intact infraspinatus tendon. In fact, if you look behind it, you can see the glenohumeral joint, right? So that is the glenoid. And you can see how the glenohumeral joint gets punched up when she externally rotates. And when internally rotates, it becomes okay. Let's do it again. A small part of the labrum is also seen as a hyperechoic triangle. All right, usually I wrap up my ultrasound exams of the shoulder by looking at the muscles. So in a transverse plane, you can see there's a very good view of the supraspinatus muscle. We're running out of depth, so we're gonna optimize it a little bit. Once we've optimized it, we can see a little bit better. We're still not seeing the bottom of the scapula, so we're gonna optimize it more. And for the demonstration purposes, I'm staying away from the machine. Usually I'm very close to the machine. It's on my left side, so I can manipulate all the nobology with my left hand. So we can see here now, that's a really good looking uh, supraspinatus muscle. And then as I slide below the uh, spine of the scapula, I have come into the infraspinatus muscle. And as I go laterally out, you can see uh, the teres minor muscle. Teres minor is a very strong muscle, rarely gets injured, and I can make a long of the teres minor, and you can see it has a fairly good muscular insertion onto the uh, humerus. So with that, we have finished the evaluation. One last dynamic uh, uh, evaluation is about the impingement. So we're gonna do the impingement test. The arm is internally rotated, and they will abduct, and then bring it back. The transducer will be in a modified coronal plane, keeping the uh, acromium and the cuff in view. So here you can see on the left side is the acromium, and on the right side is the cuff. Okay. Now we can share some, some subdeltoid bursal thickening there under the muscle. Okay, let's, uh, let's extend the arm, abduct it and gone, bring it back. Okay, let's do it slowly this time. All right, slowly again. See how nicely it slides under the acromium and out back please, bring it back. And you can see that there is absolutely no impingement. Even though the cuff is fairly thick, it's sliding under the acromium really well. And that, that tells us there is no impingement in this shoulder. So, you can extend the exam and look at other things like the axillary nerve for isolated atrophy of the teres minor, quadrilateral space syndrome. You can look at the acromioclavicular joint. You can extend your exam based on the symptoms, but essentially a, 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 a quick examination would entail the uh, findings we've already discussed. Thank you very much.